Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to Vegas, Lisa Martin with John Furrier. You're watching us on theCUBE live, the end of day one of our three days of coverage of Dell Technologies World. Can you hear the music? The party's already getting started. We have more content to bring you. Please welcome a couple of guests from DXC Technology, Kevin Johnston, Chief Sales and Revenue Officer, Cloud and Platform Service. Kevin, it's great to have you. Thank you very much, glad to be here. Uh, our pleasure. We've got Graham Stringer, Managing Director of Workplace and Mobility for Thank DXC you. Good Americas. To be here as well. Yeah, you made it just in time for the concert, guys. We did. Just in time. Here we go. All right, so Kevin, let's go ahead and start with you. Give our audience an understanding of DXC, what you guys do, who you are, all that good stuff. Yeah, okay, that's great. So DXC was formed two years ago as a result of the merger of legacy. HP Enterprise Services Business and CSC. Uh, DXC was formed really for the purpose of helping our large enterprise clients accelerate their digital transformation. So we're about a $22 billion IT services company really aligned with our partners helping our clients transform digitally. And you guys were on the cloud early too. You guys had a lot of DevOps going on. Yeah. You guys had your hands in all the clouds. We have. What's your take on here at Dell Technologies World, Microsoft's in partnering with yeah. VMware? Yeah, so, so yeah. We, we, we would share a lot of beliefs <laughs> with Dell Technology and VMware in particular in that multi-cloud is a real thing. And we see multi-cloud, especially for the large enterprise clients, really being an answer for, for quite some number of years to come. We also believe that a large percentage of application portfolios will migrate to will migrate to cloud, whether it's private clouds or public clouds, and that uh, and that there's a lot of work to be done to transform those applications to really take advantage of cloud native features. So last year's theme of Dell Technologies World was make it real, it being digital transformation, yep. security transformation, IT transformation, and workforce, workplace automation. Graham, I'd love to get your perspectives on workplace mobility and some of the things that were announced this morning with Unified Workspace, Workspace ONE, and recognizing, hey, for our customers to transform digitally successfully, we've got to make sure that their people are successful and their people are highly distributed. What are some of the things that you heard this morning that are exciting, aligning with some of the trends that you're seeing in the workplace? Well, I think the big trend that we're seeing is the role that HR is now playing in digital transformation of the workplace. If you go back two, three, four years, it was very IT-centric. Conversations were predominantly with the CIO. We're now seeing 30, 40% of organizations or more engaged at the HR level. Uh, we did a recent project with one of the big retailers in the industry, and right out of the bat, this chief HR officer was engaged right from the get-go. They want to know that their employees are going to experience work very differently. So that's one of the big trends when we're did this, When did this shift happen? When was this going on? Past a year, two years? Because this is a shift, this is HR it's now is very much. I would say the shift has definitely happened in the last couple of years. Millennials are having a huge impact. You're getting quite the uh, cross-pollination of a lot of different generations. Millennials are now having an enormous impact. If you look at outlets like Glassdoor, millennials want to know when they go to an organization, can I bring my own device? Am I going to have a great workplace experience? And you can't stick with a very traditional legacy way of delivering IT where everything was shift left and you got to a point where everybody hated each other. <laughs> That's a problem for, <laughs> yes, for productivity. Yes, very big problem for productivity, <laughs> absolutely. Talk about some of the challenges that customers have overcome with digital transformation as it started become less of a buzzword and actually yeah. more of a reality and strategic imperative that has some visibility into yeah. unit economics and value. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you know every large enterprise client we talk to is, has a digital transformation agenda of some sort and, and at some varying place along the path to trying to um, adopt a new business model or adapt to a different business process and so, um, the challenges that we see with, with these clients in general is, how do I scale? So I have legacy IT that is, is not, won't disappear overnight, and I have all the possibilities of digitally enabling or bringing new 
new digital technologies that enable uh, these, these processes or models. And, uh, and so this is a challenge. How to enable digital at scale where traditional and digital have to live together in, for some period of time. And it's not just a tech challenge, it's culture too. Very How much. How far has tech come? Because you mentioned containers yeah. with a legacy. That has been a great yeah. message to IT. Yeah. Is I can put a container around it and hold on to it for a little while long. I don't have to kill it. Yeah. And, yeah. and then make the changes to cloud native. So new tech. Yeah. There. I mean, for the tech guys, there's been a, there's been a lot of fun things. And containers probably is the bridge <laughs> for legacy apps into cloud for sure. Um, but for, for the rest of the folks, for the business the folks, normal people, the normal people, <laughs> um, it's really, I mean, the, the way work gets done and, and, uh, and the way to rethink how to do work and the mix of IT or technology into business is just different. Well, Graham's point's beautiful because the expectation of the employee or the, or the worker, whether they're in the firm or outside the firm, outside in or inside out, however they look at it, is, is the new experience they want. So the expectations are changing. Yeah. What's the biggest thing? We saw some stats on stage around remote working, three places, two places. I mean, hell, I'm always on the road. So, but what are some of the expectations that you're seeing, obviously millennials and some of the older folks? I mean. They want to see IT delivered in the way they want to receive it. That's one of the biggest trends we're seeing. So for millennial, I mean, my son's kind of in that age category, right? They love to text. To pick up a phone for a younger generation is a little bit foreign. You go and deal with baby boomers, they want to be dealt with in a much different manner. So you've got that whole change. And then you've got the whole notion now of work is changing. Where do I work? The ability to basically work 24 7 wherever I want, you know, however I want, using whatever device that I want. And that, of course, is now creating a whole new set of challenges for AT, particularly around security. But employee experience is absolutely fundamental to a business's success. Their ability to delight customers, their ability to deliver outcomes, so it's really pretty core. Talk to us about those conversations that you're having with customers. Is it something that, that they're, are, are they understanding how significant that employee experience is to bottom line business outcomes differentiation? Yeah. Very much so. We're working right now with a large manufacturing firm and they're doing not just an inside out but outside in. So they're actually coming to us as part of a workplace strategy to look at it from the outside as well. In other words, how can our client take innovation to their suppliers their customers to demonstrate that they understand it. And so that's extremely exciting when we see that they're not just focused on their own employees and the experience domain to them. Yeah. Well, one thing I might add is that, um, maybe less so from a, a user experience per se, but the individuals you know, as an employee. So the shift to digital and the skills shift that's required to go with that is, is, is really probably the most monumental change that all of us technology companies and business and the business part of, of our large enterprise clients are dealing with. Um, uh, whether it's a skills gap or whether it's a culture gap, this idea of just simply waterfall to agile and the way to think about that and, or siloed versus end to end um, as just simple ways to think differently about how to go faster um, and enable, and, and so the experience and how you recruit, who's going to make it, who can be trained, and, and then where you need to be able to source the new talent from as well. I totally agree with you. We do hundreds of shows a year, our 10th year doing theCUBE. That is the number one thing that we hear over and over again from practitioners and customers and from people working. It's like, it's not the tech. You always get a tech solution. It's the cultural and the skills gap. Both, both are huge problems. I mean. Yeah, and this is part of the digital at scale point. Yeah. So uh, we'll hire something in the neighborhood of six to 8,000 digital skills people. Um, uh, we're just about to close on acquisition of Luxoft, uh, an agile de DevOps digital uh, company. We'll bring another 13,000 in. But you think about yeah. the normal large enterprise and what you need to do to be able to have the university networks and to be able to really source at scale in order to affect the transformations that 
you know, businesses need to make to stay competitive. And the, and the other point, the engagements have changed too. I'm sure you guys have seen on your end, but every IT or CIO we talk to says, I outsourced everything decades ago, right. and now I got a couple guys running the show, now I need to have like 100x more people coding and building right. core competency. Right. So, and that's still going to need to engage people on the channel or service providers, but they need to build core talent in-house. Yeah. It's swinging back, and they don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> is, that what they, is that what they call you guys? Is that how you guys get involved? Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> so, so we, we, help, we help train. Um, we'll help clients think through what does, a, what, does a, what does an IT org or a business organization need to look like profile-wise, skill-wise, operating model-wise, um, and, and in many cases it's, I have my digital model, but I still have my traditional model that needs to coexist with it, and then and here's, here's where the opportunities are for people to you know, develop career paths and, and progress. Kevin, talk about the sweet spot of your engagements that you're doing right now. Where's the heart of your business? Is it um, someone who's you know, really hurting, needs an uh, aster, aspirin, they got a headache, is it a problem? Is it an opportunity? Is it a growth issue? Where do you see the spectrum of your engagements? Yeah. We, so we, we kind of find clients in one of three spots normally. Um, hey, I know I need to do something, but I'm not sure what it is. Can you help me figure out to get started? So more design thinking, problem solving. We have other clients at the other end of the spectrum which are, hey, I got this figured out. I need a partner to help me execute at scale. And um, I know the model that I want to do, I know the business reason for doing it. And then we have a lot of folks that are in the middle which is, I've started, I got a few hundred AWS accounts. Yeah, I got, it's out of control. I got private <laughs> cloud sitting idle. Someone help me, or I got security issues. Yeah, yeah. Compliance issues. So they're in the middle of the journey and they just right. need a little reboot right. or need, like a kickstart. They kick need, start. need help scaling. Right. Yeah, they ran out of gas. <laughs> and how are, are you working with Dell Technologies and their companies, Dell EMC, VMware, to do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, the partnership with Dell Technologies, VMware, are really center to how we go to market. Um, you know, DXC, is one of the top few partners, largest in the ecosystem. The breadth of our portfolios are extremely complementary, whether it's things like device as a service, or multi and hybrid cloud, or Pivotal and DevOps. So, so the, uh, the breadth of the portfolios max up really well, which makes it the impact potential for our clients even more important. Um, and I think, you know, Dell EMC, uh, Dell Technology broadly, is really one of the few partners that we're shoulder to shoulder going with to in the market as well. Awesome, great stuff. What's the biggest learnings you guys can share with the audience that you've gathered over your multiple engagements holistically across your client base that's learnings that could be a best practice or just some, uh, either a scar tissue or revelations or epiphanies? Share, share some uh, experience I think here. one of the big learnings we're seeing is the shift now to very much business outcome driven decision making. So again, you go back to your point about the big ITO outsourcing days. That was all about just strictly driving costs out. And that's why you got to that point where everybody was left hating each other. Now it's about business outcomes. You've got the impact of millennials. You've got organizations wanting to create a new and better experience with employees. And they're coming to us to say, how do we accomplish that? We've got an organization we're working with right now. They're trying to elevate themselves to be one of the top 50 best places to work for in the US. How do they arrive at that? For them, that's their barometer. And so it's not about driving costs out, it's really achieving that overall experience and hence a business So outcome. they're betting on productivity gains from right. morale and happy and, workers. Right, but also they're recognizing the downstream impact on their customers. Absolutely. Productivity, the level of employee engagement, right? I mean, those are the things that the organization knows that if they hit on those, I mean, the sky's the limit. Great. Anything on your end, learnings? Yeah, I, I would say the don't underestimate the talent challenge. Um, so the, the the ability to pivot from here's the way we where you all know and are familiar with doing things to the new way. The talent there there will be a big talent challenge. The other thing is the operating model from an IT standpoint. Traditional IT operating model operates at a particular speed. Cloud operates at a different speed. And and the op the tools, the talents, the skills. Uh, that go with that are just completely different. And then I think the last thing is just, you know, we, and, and it seems maybe surprising, but compliance at scale and at speed. 
right? So security and regulatory yeah. compliance, we see that falling over all the time. Yeah, great, great practice you guys, been following you guys for many years, you've got a great organization, a lot of smart people there, we've interviewed many times. My final question is a tech, tech question. What technologies do you guys like that you think is ready for prime time or almost ready for prime time, worth having customers keep focusing on, and which ones may be a little bit overhyped out of reach at the moment? I'll take a stab at that. If you look at today's Wall Street Journal, Deloitte talks to, I believe the figure they quoted was roughly 25% of organizations are doing AI in some form already, POC, or at least are committing to it in terms of strategy. We're seeing that inside DXE as well. AI is now being incorporated into our workplace offerings. The potential for that is enormous, it's real. Uh, the technology in the last couple of years, particularly with cloud computing, has really enabled it. When you look at platforms like Watson, these are capabilities that just weren't there 10, 12, 15 years ago, and now the impact that it can have on the workplace, uh, helplines, chats, chatbots, and so forth, it's, is enormous, and, and it's real. Five, 10 years ago, definitely was okay, not. Overhyped. Which What's one? overhyped? I don't know what's, what or, would come or to mind Or maybe for you. I'll rephrase it differently. Not yet ready for prime time, but looks good off the fairway, on the fairway, but not yet known. You know, what's a good? I think for me, through workplace, IOT's still got a ways to go. AI and analytics is definitely there. IOT, I would say, is a little bit behind. I'm sure that, yeah. you Kevin, know, your thoughts? Cloud yeah. platform thoughts. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I would say, from an overhyped standpoint, um, we've seen a lot of companies, large enterprises, legacy application portfolios, you know, think they're going to refactor all their applications in cloud native everything. <laughs> so, so it feels that people are now kind of, you know, yeah. getting past that point, but we still see that. We still see that idea a lot. I think the, the, the opportunity that is, that is really in front of us, and you kind of called out containers, legacy applications into cloud feel like a remaining frontier yeah. uh, for the large enterprise. Um, we, we think containers and the idea of autonomous continue um, optimization, financial performance, is, uh, is a way to make apps run at, in cloud financially and performance wise um, you know, in a way that we don't see a lot of companies kind of fully solving for that yet. Awesome. A lot of work to do, a lot of opportunity. Kevin Graham, thank you so much for sharing some of your time and thoughts and insights with John and me on theCUBE this afternoon. Very good, Great. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate it. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live from Vegas. Day one of our coverage of Dell Technologies World is now in the books. Thanks for watching.